due to popular demand, I'm going to start the long process of reviewing the Watchtower publication, Enjoy Life Forever, lesson by lesson. Now, this may take a while, but I think it'll be worth it due to the fact that this publication will be studied for years to come by anyone wishing to do a free home Bible study with the JWs. This video will not be a review of the publication itself. Rather, it will serve as an introduction and provide some guidance for anyone wishing to participate in the study with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And in the weeks to follow, we're going to be reviewing the individual lessons. Now, in 2021, the Watchtower published this book we're going to be reviewing called Enjoy Life Forever, and it has the subtitle, An Interactive Bible Study Course. In the previous years, beginning with its publication in 2005, What Does the Bible Really Teach? was used for anyone wishing to have this free home Bible study or to just become one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, both publications are similar in length. They're clocking in well over 200 pages, and they cover a similar array of topics such as the Bible, what it is and why we can trust it, our friendship with Jehovah, God's name Jehovah, issues related to the creation versus evolution debate, how to identify false religion as well as true religion, Jesus, who he is and his earthly and heavenly life, what preaching the good news means, baptism, paradise earth, the 144,000 or the anointed class, Jesus' ransom sacrifice, the afterlife, God's kingdom, general topics related to Christian living like marriage or avoiding drugs and abusing alcohol, uh, blood transfusions, celebrating holidays or not celebrating holidays, and then last but not least, the faithful slave and the governing body, and there are even more beyond this. Now, one distinctive difference between the two books is the format. The Bible Teach book is in a more readable or book-like format, whereas the Enjoy Life book is written in more of an outline format. Uh, in much of which is based on videos to be watched during the study sessions. In other words, it's intended to be more interactive. Now, there are several reasons why someone may want to study this publication with the Jehovah's Witnesses. We'll go over some of these reasons and provide some ideas for engagement on each. But first, you may be wondering why you should listen to someone like me doing a review on this book. After all, I've never been one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and I have never been formally associated with this religion in any way. However, I have spent a great deal of time with a number of Jehovah's Witnesses throughout the years studying both publications, of course, only in the recent past year with the Enjoy Life publication. In fact, I'm actually doing that with Jehovah's Witnesses right now. Uh, this very week, I'm going to be participating in a study session with Jehovah's Witnesses on the Enjoy Life publications. Now, I have my reasons for doing this, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. But if you'd like to know more as to why I'm doing this, please contact me privately. But for now, let's get into some of the reasons why someone or you might want to do this study with the Jehovah's Witnesses. First reason, you are actually interested in becoming one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, there's a myriad of reasons why you may want to become a Jehovah's Witness. But regardless, this is where you are on your path right now. And studying this publication will allow you to reach this goal. And at this point, it may be difficult to persuade you to simply stop your study or for you to get someone else to stop the study if this is their path. Instead, it may be more helpful to consider some ways to have the most honest and transparent study possible with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, if you know someone in this situation, 
someone who wants to become a Jehovah's Witness. It may not be helpful at first to simply expose the errors in the publication. That can come in time depending on how sensitive they are to such exposures to a religion that they may be convinced of already. Instead, you can provide a particular set of guidelines and tools that can lead them to a more transparent look at what the organization teaches. So here's a couple of things that you can recommend. When you're asked to read a Bible verse out loud, which you will get asked to do a lot of, always read it in context. Always, always, always read it in context. Now, in most cases, the student is only asked to read a single Bible verse. So you could encourage the student to always read the paragraphs surrounding the cited verse. Now, I don't mean the paragraph in the publication, but the paragraph in the Bible. Now, it's unlikely the study conductor will mind this. They're not going to mind. Now, getting the context of a passage can go a long way since Jehovah's Witness doctrine is not established by context, but instead by proof texting. So, for example, simply citing the word firstborn in relation to Jesus without reading the full passage of Colossians 1, 15-17 is an example of proof texting. Another key point is ask additional questions. Ask additional questions. Now, the questions being asked in the publications are not all bad. They're not. And many of them are great questions and can allow for some very engaging dialogue on important topics. However, the conductor is expecting the student to answer the questions based on the answers already given in the paragraph. And that is why reading the scriptural context is so important because it will bring out different answers to what the conductor is expecting. And the student should also be encouraged to ask additional follow-up questions. And there's nothing wrong with doing this, and the conductor probably won't mind. In fact, he or she will probably enjoy it since it's going to show that you're interested in what you're talking about. Another point, this is a very important one, is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, depending on the sensitivity of the student, you will want to find a way to help them consider the problem with Jesus not being mentioned a single time until page 37. And even then, it's only in a few passing references where you are shown how to pray. Page 37 is on Lesson 9, which could be at least nine weeks from the start of the study if they're on a weekly schedule. For me, I've been on maybe a bi week or, or every other week schedule. Now, as far as Jesus as the subject of the, the, the study session, this doesn't happen until Lesson 15. Now, don't underestimate the importance of this. If Jehovah's Witnesses are Christians and someone is studying to become a true Christian, why is it that they must go at least three to four months before they start learning anything about Jesus? Now consider some of the ways you could approach a student about this. So for example, every few weeks, every few weeks, or it could be every week, you could ask them how their study is going. And then you could ask, have you started learning about Jesus yet? And what have you learned? And you obviously don't want to ask them that so often that it's annoying, but you could ask them enough times to get them wondering why there is so little focus on Jesus when that is what being a Christian is all about. 
Another point is look up the verses being cited, not just the verses where you're asked to read, but the verses that are cited, the ones that are in parenthesis oftentimes. Now, in many cases, Bible verses are cited, but the student isn't asked to read them out loud or to acknowledge them at all. And the student may or may not be able to read each one of them out loud. Now, that could, this could be more along the lines of doing homework. But you could encourage the student to always read the Bible verses on their own in context and make sure they support the point that's being said. And if it doesn't, the student should be encouraged to ask the conductor about it. Another recommendation is use multiple Bible translations. Now, unfortunately, if the student is using JW.org to access the publication rather than the printed version, then all the Bible verses are going to be hyperlinked and easily accessible through the website. This means most students are going to be reading only the New World Translation. That's the Jehovah's Witness Bible. And it may be difficult to persuade them to do this, but you could at least encourage them to consult the Kingdom Interlinear Translation, which is available on JW.org, if for no other reason than to dig a little, little deeper and get a better grasp of the underlying Greek language. Or you could encourage them to regularly consult other Bible translations due to the fact that there is more than one way to translate Greek into English, just like there's more than way, one way to translate any language into English. And if anything, the Legacy Standard Bible, which is a pretty new translation, it may impress the student since it uses the divine name Yahweh in the Hebrew Scriptures. Another recommendation is to do an actual Bible study, <laughs> an actual Bible study. And this is, this, is a, this is a bolder recommendation, and it may not work, but you could try. Now, while in a book study, the student may or may not be reading the Bible on their own. If they are faithfully attending uh, the Jehovah's Witness meetings and participating, they will be doing at least some of that. And consider encouraging the student to read at least one chapter of the Christian scriptures daily. And for every chapter or few chapters that they read, ask them to share with you one thing they learned about Jesus. So what you want to do is instill in their mind how much the Christian scriptures focus on Jesus and how little the Watchtower does. Last recommendation, and this is again for people who are studying and interested in becoming one of Jehovah's Witnesses, make sure they know what they're getting themselves into. So, what ha for example, what happens if you decide to leave the JW religion someday? And most who want to become Jehovah's Witnesses don't even think about this because they're just, they're just excited, right? They're just excited. And nor do they even think about the process by which the departure can take place. And what I mean by that is the judicial committee in that whole process. And this can happen due to unrepentant sin or it could be just open disagreements uh, with the organization. But disfellowshipping will result, and this is really important, so if it's unrepentant sin or open disagreement with the organization, you're going to have endless shunning from all of your Jehovah's Witness friends and family until you decide to return to the organization in full repentance. And even then, even then, this returning process could take, could take weeks, it could take months even, before full reinstatement and the shunning end. So this is not a prodigal son kind of uh, religion. That, that doesn't happen. That's, that's a pipe dream. So a very important question to consider is why this whole process of judicial committees and shunning 
is not discussed in the Enjoy Life publication. Why not? Okay. Second reason as to why you might be embarking on this study with the Jehovah's Witnesses is you are interested in the religion, but you aren't sure if it's true. Of course, someone in this situation could benefit from any of the, 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 the previous recommendations I made for someone who actually wants to become a Jehovah's Witness, but there's actually much more of an opportunity for you to lead someone in this position away from the religion. Someone who's not sure if it's true, you could use the following information to perhaps lead them away from doing this study. However, you still have to maintain some level of sensitivity to where they're at in their spiritual journey. All right, so this is, this is not a catch-all uh, recommendation. Now, consider the fact that for such a person, the conductor may regularly ask if anyone is attempting to thwart their efforts in their study. Now, if there's any hint of this from you or anyone else, friends or family, trying to dissuade them from doing the study, the conductor will likely use this to their advantage. In fact, there's a number of video dramas on JW.org that show exactly this kind of situation. So, in other words, these dramas show real-life examples, at least we think they are, we're told they are, or maybe they're not, but they're showing, they're showing examples of persons who are on a study with Jehovah's Witnesses, but everyone around them is opposing it, all their friends and family. Okay, So, this person in this situation, they may reason, maybe through the influence of their conductor, if these opposers were so convinced that they have the truth, why are they treating me this way? Why are they opposing me so much? After all, didn't Jesus say... So it's important that you don't oppose a student in this way. And you just don't want to be bombarding them with links to XJW websites, uh, apostate literature, and things like that. Uh, that could backfire if you don't approach it carefully. Instead, there's a couple of other approaches that you could take. So you could consider, is this really a Bible study at all? Uh, the Enjoy Life book is called, after all, a Bible study course. So you could ask something like, I think it's so great that you're studying the Bible. And last week at your study, uh, which Bible book were you reading? Or uh, which chapters and Bible verses uh, did, you, did you go over? Now, you'll likely be answered with something like, well, we didn't actually read uh, any books of the Bible or any passages in the Bible, but uh, we read a whole bunch of different Bible verses and we had some great discussions about them. So what this does is it gives you an opportunity to emphasize the fact that the Bible is intended to be studied in a verse-by-verse -verse context, um, in the context of an entire Bible book. So as a follow-up, uh, you could ask, now what would your study conductor say if you asked him or her to read through the book of Romans with you or the book of John with you or even just a couple of chapters? Now, if they were asked, the study conductor would probably say something like, well, we, we certainly encourage Bible reading, and, and we hope that you'll read along uh, in the congregational uh, Bible reading plan each week. But for our purposes, we use publications like this because it systematically brings together all the major Bible themes in an easy-to-understand way. Now, to be fair, there's, there's nothing wrong with studying a publication in and of itself, but what you want to emphasize is the importance of a Bible teacher, a self-proclaimed Bible teacher, telling you that they don't want to study the actual Bible with you. I mean, let that sink in. Let that, let that be a very important and emphasized point that a Bible teacher doesn't want to read 
the Bible itself with you. So next thing to consider is, is outside information allowed? So for this one, you, you've really got to be careful in how you approach it, but it, it's worth considering. Now, would a study conductor allow non-Jehovah's Witness or non-Watchtower approved Bible study tools like Bible dictionaries, Bible lexicons, or Bible commentaries in their study? No, they're not. But if they don't, why don't they? Now, while they, they're not going to agree with the contents of a Bible co commentary, but what does that say about this religion if they forbid the use of such information? So, you could say to the student, if you were studying the Bible with me, I would welcome the use of any Bible study tool that you'd like to bring. And then we can compare what the Bible study tool says with the Bible itself. So in saying that, you want to instill in their mind that there is one side who's open to the examination of all the evidence and another side who is not open to the examination of all the evidence. They're only open to the examination of what they bring in other words, from their approved literature. Another point to consider is, are you allowed to disagree with your study conductor? Now, any disagreement you have with your conductor should always be respectful. And you should always give your study conductor a fair amount of time to answer your objections. Now, if in the end you don't agree with the study conductor's explanation, the student should be free to ask what happens if in the end we don't agree on this particular topic. So for example, you go through the chapter on whether you should accept a blood transfusion, and if in the end you say, you know, I, I just don't think uh, the Bible teaches against blood transfusions. Instead, I think it should be up to the conscience of every Christian whether they're going to accept a blood transfusion or not. So what what if in the end um, that's your conviction and you share that with the study conductor? So I think it's a real important point to consider if that's where you're at in the study. Last point, are the teachings in the publication absolute? So you should consider the fact or your, the student should consider the fact that the society has changed their position numerous times on various doctrines and teachings. Now, while your study conductor will likely try to convince you that this is actually a positive thing, you should be aware that a change is still a change. A change is still a change. They can say, the light's getting brighter and brighter, or we're just offering clarifications. They can say those things as much as they want, but a change is still a change. So the point is, can your conductor assure you that what you are learning today from this publication are those Bible truths from Jehovah? And if they are Bible truths from Jehovah, can any of those truths be changed into something different? That's an important thing to consider. Now, the last uh, motivation for doing this study, it kind of falls under the kind of person who's not interested at all in becoming a witness, but yet they still want to do this study with Jehovah's Witnesses. So if that's you, I can maybe think of two reasons why you would want to engage in a study. The first reason is you could just have an academic interest in learning more about this religion. And that's actually how I got involved uh, in learning about the Jehovah's Witness. It was purely through uh, academic uh, research. It did turn into more than that uh, down the road. But at, at first, I, I did the study, the What Does the Bible Really Teach publication. I did that study uh, solely for, uh, for academic uh, reasons. Okay, so that could be you. But 
the other reason, it could be that you want to use this study uh, to share your faith or what you believe to be true with the Jehovah's Witness. So, in other words, it's a means of evangelism. All right, so let me just offer a couple of things for you to think about um, if you are engaging in the study but you're not interested in becoming a witness. So, first thing is, please know that you are not expected to become a Jehovah's Witness. But be careful, though. Don't pretend <laughs> that you're interested in becoming a Jehovah's Witness if you really aren't. Because sometimes in an effort to be kind and nice and respectful, uh, we could unknowingly, unintentionally, give the wrong impression that we actually are interested in becoming a witness. So, you're not under any obligation to show all your cards, right? But you should at least share some of your intentions with them so they don't get the wrong impression. So, there's various ways for you to express this, but here's just a couple of ways. So, you could say to the Jehovah's Witness, when we originally began our discussions, um, you offered to study the Bible with me. And I, I love studying the Bible so much that I would do it with just about anyone. So, I'm here, and I'm willing to study the scriptures and follow the truth wherever it may lead. So, do you have that same desire as a Jehovah's Witness? So, you could say that. Or you could say, I'm more than happy to study the Bible with you. Uh, but I do hope you understand that I've got strong convictions about what I believe, just as I'm sure you have strong convictions about what you believe. And I'd love to learn more about what you believe as long as you allow me the same courtesy of expressing what I believe by reasoning with you from the scriptures. So those are a couple of things that you, that you could say. So even if you aren't expected to become a Jehovah's Witness, uh, it is almost certainly the hope of your study conductor that you do become one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So, even though there are some Jehovah's Witnesses that are glad to study with you with no strings attached, it's quite possible that they're going to end their study with you if you're not showing that you're being influenced by their teachings. They could just end uh, the study early. That could happen. That's happened to me before. All right. Next thing to understand is you're not expected to go to the Kingdom Hall or any Jehovah's Witness events. So they're likely, very likely, at some point, probably soon, uh, to start giving you routine invitations to Kingdom Hall meetings or to special events like the annual memorial or the convention or something like that or a special talk they're having. You don't have to go to any of that. You don't. All right. The reason they invite you so often, it could just be for just the zeal they have uh, for the religion because they want you to experience what they experience. They want you to uh, go to the meetings and see how unified they are. They want you to see the love they have for one another, and you're probably going to get love-bombed if you do go, all right? But don't feel obligated to go. So if you're asked, if you're asked multiple times, you can always just say, you know, I, I, I really appreciate uh, the invitation, but I'm just not ready to go to your meetings. And you could just leave it at that. You're being nice. You're being friendly. You're not acting offended. Um, you can just say that and move on. Don't feel obligated to go to the meetings. All right. All right. So next is uh, more of a uh, recommendation or maybe a little bit of a tip. Okay. If you're in this uh, position, argue less question more. Argue less, question more. So if it's your desire to share what you believe with your study conductor, then frame your arguments into questions as much as possible. Now obviously, the study itself is going to require your participation in that you're going to be asked questions and you're going to have to answer those questions. But don't be shy about asking a question back to your conductor after you answer. So 
often after you answer a question, you know, you give your answer, the conductor is going to elaborate a little bit more. They might even offer a gentle correction, and then they're just going to move on to the next section. And soon enough, you've got to be patient, uh, but soon enough, it's going to be your turn uh, to read the scripture out loud, um, or you're going to be asked to read uh, a paragraph in the publication. But instead of reading it, you could just pause, and you could just ask, you know, before we move on to this next point, um, would you mind answering a, a question I just had about what you said or about uh, what was in the last paragraph? Can I ask you a question about that? They're not going to mind that at all. You should, you should do that. So the whole point here is if you frame your arguments as questions, you'll get your study conductor to do things they are not supposed to do. And what is that? Thinking independently. Thinking independently. You want them to think independently. So that's why oftentimes asking questions is better than making arguments or making statements. Okay? Now, you're going to be offering arguments at some point, and you just got to wait for the right time. So I'm not saying you just literally only ask questions, but I'm just saying ask more questions and just wait to give your arguments when it's appropriate to do so. There's not a perfect way to do this. I'm just trying to give you um, maybe a principle to think about, okay? Because so oftentimes, and I've watched so many interactions between Jehovah's Witnesses and Christians, they're all over the internet, I just see so often the Christian is just making arguments, making arguments, and making arguments, right? And a lot of times they'll just go, those just go in one ear and, 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 and out the other. So you want to get the Jehovah's Witness to think, okay? Get them to think, and in particular, get them to think independently. All right, last point of consideration is just consider whether you should be doing this publication study at all. Should you be doing it at all? So you, the reason I say this is you've got to understand that you, when you agree to studying this publication, you're giving control over to the Jehovah's Witness, which is giving control ultimately to the organization. Right? In other words, they are going to be deciding on the topics, and you're going to be doing it all on their terms. So you've, you've really got to know what you're getting into. So you've got to prayerfully consider uh, what direction would be most honoring to God, studying this publication or studying the Bible. And I'm not going to tell you like what to do here, but I, I do hope uh, that you'll prayerfully consider uh, the right direction. And it may just be that if you choose not to study the publication and you just want to go over uh, go over the Bible with them or certain uh, Bible topics of your choosing, you may not get to engage as long as you would otherwise going through the publication itself. But but that's okay. All right. The whole point here is for you to plant seeds. And for you to be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ, that's your only job. It's not to convince them. I'm sure you hope they'll be convinced, and uh, maybe they will be convinced. But don't feel like you've got to do this publication, and that's the only way that you can uh, engage them. No, you don't have to do this on their terms, and that's okay. I'm just asking, please prayerfully consider the direction. Now, all of that really just depends on uh, how your interaction with the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, started in the first place. And it could just be that, you know, one day you're walking your dog through town and then you saw a literature cart and you started to ask uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses questions, okay? And then you meet another time in your home, another time at a coffee shop. And um, after so many meetings, it usually only takes a, a couple. It could only take like one or two. Um they're going to say something like, you know, I think you're really asking some great questions, but the best way for us to really answer all these questions is to go through this publication with you. <laughs> They're probably going to say something like that at some point soon. So the reality is, whether they say that or not, you may not actually get your questions answered uh, through uh, that publication, right? 
so in light of that, you could say something like, well, I'm sure this publication uh, does cover some interesting topics, but what I am most interested in is reading the Bible with you and seeing what it has to say about some of these questions that I'm asking. So do you think maybe we could just go through the first couple of chapters of Romans or uh, the first couple of chapters of, uh, of the Gospel of John and see what it has to say? Do you think maybe we could uh, do something like that and then maybe later on we could uh, go through this uh, publication? So in a sense, when you do this, um, you're going to be holding their feet to the fire because what they probably offer to you was a Bible study, right? If they use the words Bible study to you, you can hold their feet to the fire. So you can ask them for exactly that and say, yes, I would love to have a Bible study with you. Which book of the Bible can we study together? Um, now, that may not happen. Things don't always uh, go that, that perfectly. But that, that is something uh, that you maybe could say uh, if the opportunity uh, arises. Okay, But... Regardless, hopefully up to that point, after a few conversations, uh, you've had the opportunity to share a number of uh, scriptures with them that hopefully uh, provoked uh, some independent thinking, and hopefully you can influence them. And so that's okay. If you only get a couple of conversations and you've got to kind of uh, part ways, uh, that's okay. Uh, because it's not your job to convince them. It, the only thing that's your job to do is to faithfully uh, be a witness of Jesus to them and to share uh, what the scriptures teach. That's, that's, your, <laughs> that's your only job. Uh, share the truth and let the Holy Spirit uh, do the rest. So I hope this uh, was helpful to you. Um, maybe you have some additional thoughts. Maybe you, you've engaged in this study uh, yourself with Jehovah's Witnesses, or maybe you've actually been a study conductor yourself. So regardless, I'd love to hear uh, what your experiences uh, have been. Uh, with uh, this publications, or maybe you have some additional insights. Maybe you disagree uh, with some of my approaches, and that's okay. I would love to hear from you. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, feel free to leave uh, your comments below. Um, if you're on my website, michaeljfelker.com, you can leave a comment there. Uh, if you'd like to contact me privately, that is great too. Go down to the show notes or the video description, and you can uh, contact me through my website, which basically starts an email. Uh, discussion. We can text, we can talk on the phone, we can talk through WhatsApp, through Skype, uh, whatever it is. Uh, privately, I'm happy to have conversations uh, with you. Uh, so um, let's, let's do that. If that's something that you want to do, I uh, do that all the time. Um, nearly every day I'm having some kind of uh, private discussion with people, and that is great. I really enjoy doing that, so just don't be shy. Contact me directly if you would like. Uh, lastly, if you want to support this work, please share this material, especially these Enjoy Life Forever reviews. Uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to create a playlist uh, to where you can just share a link uh, of the playlist, and it'll grow as, uh, as the weeks uh, continue to where eventually we'll have every single lesson on one playlist, and you can just share it with someone who maybe knows someone who's uh, going through the study or they're going through this study themselves. So hopefully uh, this can be a help uh, to people for years to come. So uh, with that said, um, look forward to the next review. Hopefully that will be posted uh, within the next week where we go through lesson one. So uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Have a great week. For more information about Jehovah's Witnesses and other topics, please visit michaeljfelker.com. There you can also reach me directly to submit questions or comments to be covered on the JW Review. To subscribe to this podcast, please go to iTunes and search for the JW Review.